John chapter 14. Amen. Y'all quiet. <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you for all oh, your grace, your mercy, your truth, your peace, your joy, your love. Thank you, Lord, that it abides in us because you abide in us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, as we shared last Sunday where you said, pray this way, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that your will is being done on earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, as we declare that, we will see kingdoms fall. We will see evil rulers fall. We will see uh, righteous men and women rise up and the church awakened and become the mighty army that you have declared. We thank you for God that we are part of that army. We declare, God, that we will, we will walk in your will and in your ways, and we will see great things in Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 14, verse 12, it says this in the, uh, it's the God's Word translation. It says, I can guarantee this truth. Those who believe in me, this is Jesus talking now, amen. How many of you have said something that's probably true? Amen. He said, I can guarantee this truth. Those who believe in me. How many believers in him do we have? Amen. Just a, you online, if you're a believer in him, just raise your hand. Okay, thank you. I can guarantee this truth. Those who believe in me will do the things that I am doing. <clears throat> they will even do greater things because I'm going to the Father. Let me read that again. I guarantee this truth. I guarantee it. Those who believe in me. That seems pretty simple, doesn't it? It doesn't say those who went to Bible school. It doesn't say those who, you know, got a, a, a specific touch from God at a revival meeting, although I'm all for it and I've had it. Amen. But it says, those who believe in him will do the things I'm doing and greater things. Now, when you think about greater things, I mean, it's like, that's like big time greater things. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we got to get to the point where we're just doing the things. <laughs> Amen. And that's why we talked about what we talked about last week and what we talked about, you know, many, many times. Renewing your mind to who you are in Christ. Because in him, Christ in you, is the hope of glory for this world. The only thing that the, 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 this world has that's good right now is the church. Is the truth. Amen? And it's the only thing. God alone can save America or save any other nation. Or save this world for the destruction that many are, are uh, working hard to perform. You know, you can look at it, you can look at the news and you can think, well, you know what, yeah, that problem, this problem, and yeah, that's a problem, that's an issue. And, and, and you, you could look at all that stuff and, and, and come up with natural answers to what's happening. It's amazing, you know, we, we have people that, you know, uh, couldn't, uh, you know, with all of the science and everything else, couldn't stop a pandemic. But they're going to change the climate. I don't know about you, but that's absolutely ridiculous. Amen. And the world is not going to end in eight years or nine years like some have, have declared because of global warming. Anyway, I don't want to get on that. But I'm just telling you, you look at the science and you will find that there were changes throughout the centuries of cold times. It wasn't too long ago, several years back, they were actually declaring that there would be an ice age. Yeah. But what I'm telling you is that a lot of what you see going on are moves 
and, and plans to absolute, absolutely destroy the world, let alone America. Amen. And the only thing, the only thing that stands in the way of that is the church and the truth. That's why truth is absolutely so critical to our lives, your personal lives Amen. and to the world. The insanity is just beyond comprehension. It's just beyond comprehension. I'm saying it's beyond comprehension, the insanity. <laughs> but he's raising up a church. He's raising up a people. And if there's ever been the time to get more passionate about Jesus, to get more passionate about his word, to get more passionate about acting on what you know and what you've heard, it's now. It's not a time to just sit back. It's not a time to just be a, uh, we used to call it pew warmers, but although these are chairs. But it's not enough just to sit there and listen. You've got to take what you hear and put it into action. Because that's what faith really is. It's not about hearing. Faith comes by hearing. But the, the literal meaning of hearing means to take what you hear and do something with it. Amen. So as we talked about last week, you know, uh, that we have the faith of God. And maybe I'll touch on that just a little bit. But, but understanding that we have the faith of God on the inside of us. But the only thing that, that, that stops it from being manifested is you or me. Amen. We have this faith on the inside of it. We can speak to mountains. You know, we, we've, we've, we've preached it. We, we've, you know, we got songs about it. You know, mountains will move and, and all those things. But, you know, they, they don't do anything unless you do something. Hello. You have an authority in the earth to speak truth and to see things change, to see mountains move, to see sickness and disease dissolved in Jesus' name. But you have to act on it. We kind of can become just so uh, normalized, you might say. But the normal is really abnormal. It's abnormal for somebody to be on medication all their life in the kingdom. I'm not, you know, putting anybody down that's on medication. You need medication, good, you know, you can take it. If you need a doctor, you know, go to the doctor. If you need an operation, go ahead and do that, whatever God tells you to do. All I'm saying is it's not normal for the kingdom. When we pray this prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I prayed this over a man that was dying the other day. Your will be done. And I declared, there is no sickness, there is no cancer, there is no disease in heaven. So we pray that here now, in this time, in this body, in this person, in Jesus' name. And the same should apply to every one of us. None of us should be dependent on the things of this world. Thank you for that one amen. I think I heard one somewhere. <clears throat> he says, I guarantee this truth. Jesus cannot lie. Those who believe in me will not only do the works that I do, but they will do greater works than these because I go to the Father. And what he's talking about is when I go to the Father, it's better that I go because as I go, when I go, then the Spirit will come and he will come into your life and upon your life and you will be empowered to do great things. But sometimes we have been churched so long that we, we can forget who we are because we're just church people. We're not, we're not miracle workers like some that we know. We're, we're just good people. We go to church. We pay our taxes and we cut our grass on time and we do what we're supposed to do and it makes us good Christians. That's all good, but it's beyond that. I've heard many stories of people that live next door to somebody that was a, a leader in the church. And they find out one day that they're Christians. 
from somebody else because they never had a conversation with them, never reached out to them, never spoke to them. But we're supposed to be witnesses. Now, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty or condemned or anything like that. I'm just telling you. I know what, what you know, the things that I have experienced in, in my life. And I'm telling you, being a witness is so much better than not. <laughs> Speaking truth into people's lives, simple prayers for people, whatever it is. But, but we cannot be just consumed with our lives. You're not here for your purpose. You're not here for your destiny. You are here for his purpose and his destiny and what he wants you to do and, and why you are alive in this day and in this hour Amen. to do the works of Jesus on the earth. I know when I prayed for this fellow the other day, some of his family members were, were there and, and the, the doctors, you know, don't give much hope. But I still laid hands on them and prayed for a miracle. I know they were looking at me like, well, we don't want, we don't want false hope. You know, we don't want to get somebody to think that maybe there's a chance. Why not? What do we got to lose? I've been on fire calls, you know, where a man died at the hotel over here. I happened to be close by, and I went to the call. And the man's dead, been dead for, I don't know, at least 15, 20 minutes. But I still put my hands on him. Because I believe God raises the dead. He's not the only one that I've prayed for that, that died. This fellow that was here not too long ago and testified. I didn't, you know, actually pray, you know, lay hands on him, but I prayed at the hospital for him to live and to not die. And against all odds, after no heartbeat for 30 minutes, he's alive and well. He's, he's out on, on calls helping people in an ambulance. I, I mean, it's just, and training people, you know, how to do CPR and all that. But you've got to act on what you know. You know, he said, if you've got faith, just like a, a, a little mustard seed, if you've just got that much faith, you can say to the mountain, you all got the faith of God on the inside of you. Can you say amen? amen? Faith is the victory that overcomes the world, he said. Now we talked about Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8, you know, that, that uh, it is by his, uh, not only his grace, but it's by our faith. In other words, God provided salvation for us by his grace, but it's our faith that makes things happen. We talked about the, the fact that we have things uh, uh, that belong to us in the spiritual realm, but then we have to extract it from the spiritual realm into reality. That's what you do every time you pray for somebody that is sick or whatever the case might be, dying or even dead. You know, when you're, when you're praying that prayer, you are taking hold of what's happening in heaven and the realm of heaven where there's uh, absolute health, healing, wholeness in everybody's life, and you are drawing it down from heaven and, 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 and causing it to manifest here on the earth. And the thing that stops us more than anything else is what we believe about ourselves. Because we think, well, that's for, you know, so-and-so, you know, the, the big-name people, you know, the, you know, the, the evangelists and, and the, the healing ministers and so forth. No, it's for you. I said it last week, God's raising up a church that we will all be healing evangelists. Amen. We will all be healing evangelists. Every one of us will be healing evangelists, Amen. miracle workers. That's his plan. I want to be a part of it. I don't know about you, but I want to be a part of it. But you've got to realize what you have on the inside of you. You know, it's like a nuclear power on the inside. But it, it has to be released. And we release it many times just by the words that we say. The faith of God that's on the inside of us can stay dormant until we die. Miles Monroe put it this way. He said, you know, if you want to see the greatest treasure in the world where it's buried is in the graveyard. 
because people have so much treasure that's on the inside of them that they never released. Miracles, signs, wonders, all those things, you know, maybe scientific, uh, uh, you know, experiments that, that brought forth cures for cancers or whatever. But, but many people never really proceed, never really get out of the box that they're in. So many people, you know, they, they get a job and they get a, and it's, it's interesting you ever think about it. But, you know, we, a child is born and we potty train them. And, and, and we teach them a few things. Then we send them to school, homeschool. It's probably better these days. <clears throat> In fact, I just saw somebody, a well-known national figure, uh, put a message out saying, take your kids out of the orientation factories. Because it's happening. But anyway... But we, 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 we raise them and, and, and then we, we school them for, you know, eight years of elementary school. And then, you know, then there's middle school and, and then there's high school. And, and, and then, you know, sometimes they'll, they'll go to college and, and, and uh, uh, you know, get a degree. And then they'll get a job and, and then they're just stuck there for the rest of their life. For one reason, pretty much, you know, could get a house and you know, get a decent car and uh, get a pension so that when I retire, I can just take it easy. Wow, what a glorious life. Is that all there is to it? That's, that's kind of the American dream, you know. Get a good job, good education first, you know. Get a good job and make good money and have a nice house and go on a vacation work a job for 20 years, 30 years, retire, die. Well, he was a good worker. I just liked him. He was a good worker. I just appreciate the work he did. Is that what you're, you want your obituary to say? They were a nice person. Or they changed my life. They healed my body. They delivered me from drugs. They helped bring my marriage back together. They were there for me when I needed it the most. That's what I want my life to be. But so many times we don't think we add up. We're, we're, not, we're not good enough. We're not, we don't know enough Bible. We don't, we don't have enough of this or enough of that. You know, we're, we, you know, we're, just, we're just people, you know. We just work our jobs and raise our kids and pay our bills. And... But you are. You don't realize who we are. You don't realize who you are. You don't realize what God has done. You don't realize really who he is in you. How many think of that? Christ in you. It's the hope of glory. Christ in you. Not in somebody else. Not, not in a little box up on the altar, but he's in you. The hope of glory. What hope? The hope that people have that something can change in their lives in their families, in America. Wow. Go to Ephesians real quick, Ephesians chapter 2. I hope I'm not upsetting you. Oh, I'm glad you didn't stay there. <laughs> Peace of chapter, I'm going to read out of the New Living Translation. It says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. I know that's something we don't like to talk about these days, you know. It's still a factor 
You know, we, we, we have mercy for people, but listen, sin is sin. And sin will destroy. Anyway, it says you need, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world. I, I was a, what do you mean? I was a good person. I, no, but you were a sinner. You may not have sinned a lot, but you're still a sinner. See, it was who, what your nature was. You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil. That's another one that people don't want to talk about today. There's actually a devil. The commander of the powers in the unseen world. He's the spirit that's at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. If you look at what's happening in political realms, governments, and so forth, you will find that spirit is what's moving things and changing things and causing things to happen. That spirit, the spirit of the, as it says, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He's the spirit that's at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way. No matter how good you think you were. Or I. Following the passionate desires, the inclinations of our sinful nature. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger just like everybody else. But God. Everybody say, but God. It's important where you know where your butt is. Did I say that wrong? <laughs> but God. Everybody say, but God. Yeah. Is so rich in mercy. Amen. He had mercy on you. Amen. You old ugly thing. He had mercy on me. Even though I thought I was a good person. He had mercy on me. And put faith in my heart to be able to receive him. Amen. God is so rich in mercy. And he loved us so much. Amen. He loved you so much. He still loves you so much. All of your mess ups, he still loves you no matter what you were doing, no matter where he found you, he still loves you. So great a love. Even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's grace that you have been saved. Something that we ought to shout and be rejoicing, not only on Sunday, but every day of the week. Amen. Every day your eyes open, you'll say, hallelujah, thank God he saved me. He saved me, he saved me, he saved me. I'm alive because he saved me. Amen. Every one of us, I know personally, I can tell you, there were times I could have easily died. One I'll never forget. Fighting the fire, six-story brick building, standing there outside with large hose lines to try to put this fire out. And suddenly, a six-story brick wall collapses where we're standing. And somehow, but God, <laughs> I find myself underneath a fire truck protected from the bricks. And all my crew, not a, not a mark on them. But God, Amen. by his grace, we have been saved. Not just to go to heaven, but here and now. Yes. Here and now for a purpose, his purpose. Amen. Then he says this, for he raised us up from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? I said, did you hear that? So God can point to us in all future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all he's done for us who are united with Christ Jesus. Wow. Now you think about it, think about your life, your everyday life. God is going to point to us. See what I did? <laughs> See what I did in them. You can't look in the mirror. Most of you looked in the mirror before you came here today. Most of you. <laughs> 
You know, and you look at and you look at and it's like, well, that, that's me, that's me. But it's not you. It's just the house you live in. The only mirror that tells you who you are is this mirror right here. The true you. And life will throw all kinds of stuff at us to try to uh, totally demolish the image of God on the inside of us. Pain and sorrow and hurt and relationship and situations and, and all kinds of stuff that comes our way to begin to totally uh, disfigure who we really are on the inside. But he said, he raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly place, Hallelujah. in Christ. I was listening to this song. Deanna actually put it up. Is she out there somewhere? I guess. She put this song up uh, from Phil Wickham, a worship leader, a songwriter. And the song's title is, I Am the One You Love. I've been listening to it over again, over again. I am the one that you love. And the Bible says faith works by love. But if we don't know we're loved, it hinders our faith from working. And I was sitting in my chair and I'm, I'm, I'm meditating on what, what he was saying in, in, in the song. And he says, you would choose me all over again. You're proud of me, even though at times I don't deserve it. And he says, there's a place at the table for me. And I just started imagining this, like, conference table in heaven. And I saw myself sitting at the table with Kenneth Hagin, Smith Wigglesworth, Billy Graham, and all of these great leaders, ministers, preachers, evangelists, miracle workers, but I'm sitting with them because there's a place at the table for everyone that's in Christ. And you and I are seated with him and when we're seated with him, yet we're here on the earth, everything that is a part of being in Christ in heaven can be manifested here on the earth because we are not any less than any one of those I mentioned or the great cloud of witnesses. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Abby, can you imagine? You can. You're an imaginer. Can you imagine, though, sitting there with Jesus, but you're part of his crew, sitting there with Abraham, sitting there with Paul and, and Peter and those of old, but then those that you're familiar with. And yet you are part of the team. You're part of his team. Amen. And you're no less favored than any of them, no less loved, no less appreciated than every one of them are. And when you get that picture, and I would just encourage you to meditate on that. I am seated with him. See yourself as seated with him. And hear him whisper in your ear, nothing shall be impossible to you. Why? Because you're seated with me. You're in me. And I'm, when you're down here, I'm in you. You're always here with me, in me. But then I am always down here in you, with you. And nothing, nothing is impossible. 
as you walk this walk. You have a seat at the table. We all do. Take advantage of it. Amen. So, Father, we thank you that in the days to come, you will point to us. You will point to Pastor Nancy and Jerry and Laura and Gabe and Abby and Teresa. To each and every one that's seated here or listening. And to all your people. You'll point to us in the future ages as examples of the incredible wealth of your grace and your kindness toward us. And show all that has been done, not only for us, but through us in the days to come, because we are united with Christ. Thank you, Lord that we are your masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do the good things that you planned for us a long time ago. Lord, I pray that we will not fail to follow you. Where you lead us, where you guide us. As the scripture says, the prayer or, or the steps of a righteous man and woman are already, already laid out for every one of us. God, help us remember as we go through our week, as we awaken in the morning and say, Holy Spirit, lead me today. I want your will to be done, not just what I got to do and my work and my kids and all the things that we, we do. But Lord, what do you want? What would you have me do? Maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it's visit someone. Maybe it's write to someone. I mean, whatever it is. Or pray. Holy Spirit, lead us. Because these are days of tantamount importance of great, 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 great results as we rise up to be your church. For you said, this is the truth. This is the truth. I guarantee it that those who believe me and act on my word and act on who they are, they will do the things that you see me doing and even greater things because I have already gone to the Father. So rise up, church. Awaken to your destiny and purpose in Christ. Be all that I have called you to be in the earth today. Hear my voice loud and clear. Follow me like you've never followed me before. My will in heaven will be done through you on the earth. Now is the time. Now is the time like never before to see the fullness of my purpose revealed in the earth realm. Be encouraged. Be strengthened in truth that you can do what I call you to do. You will be what I've called you to be. 
and you will perform as I've called you because when you do it, I'm doing it in and through you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Stand to your feet. Hallelujah.